Well, I'm in New York today with Sandy Peterson, Group Worldwide Chairman for Johnson & Johnson and a member of the Microsoft Board of Directors. So, Sandy, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Thanks, well, Mike. Thank you. It's, you know, your career has been so incredibly diverse. Uh, you've spent time at major companies including Johnson & Johnson, Bayer, Nabisco, and Whirlpool. I even understand you spent a year working in Germany. Uh, tell us a, a little bit about this background. How did this all get started? I never planned to work in business. I started out being a policy economics person who dabbled in the humanities and the arts, and it was really, quite honestly, a fluke. I ended up right after college spending a year trading stocks on the American Stock Exchange, which was a, a fascinating learning experience. And then I went to graduate school um, and got a degree in, in public policy, in economics and science policy. And I was very fortunate during that time. I got to go live and work in Germany. I worked in the finance ministry. I did a bunch of interesting things there. And when I finished graduate school, I joined McKinsey. And I was one of their experiments. I was one of the first non-MBAs who went to McKinsey. And I spent a number of years there. And I learned a lot because I worked in many very varied industries from um, computers, telecom, cookies and crackers, jet engines. And I learned a lot about you know, there's some fundamentals about business that are interesting and you can take them from one place to another. And from that, it just launched me into being a business executive in many different industries and many different contexts. Boy, what an array, Sandy. What was maybe the earliest career lesson you think you picked up and still take today? I think the most important lesson I learned is intellectual curiosity, agility of learning, and relying on other people and figuring out how to get the best out of them. How does this unique background, how does it fit with or complement the other members of the Microsoft board? So as you well know, we have a terrific board that's filled with people, some who've come out of and been in the technology world forever, people who've worked in finance, people who've worked in lots of different parts of um, industry around the globe. And I would say I bring a couple of things to the board. One is I'm a complete globalist. I've lived and worked and run businesses around the globe, so I have great sensitivity of how all of that works. I also would say I am one of the enterprise customers that Microsoft um, works with every day. So I bring a sensibility to what enterprise customers care about, what's most important to them, how to translate some of the amazing technology that exists inside Microsoft and helping make it more relevant to the productivity of people who work in companies all over the world. And you've been an independent director on the Microsoft board since December of 2015. Uh, can you tell us, how were you invited to first serve on the Microsoft board? Microsoft has a terrific process of working with outside uh, advisors to figure out what's the right profile of a board member to add to the mix. So we're always looking at the composition of the board and how to make it most relevant going forward. And I was approached by a recruiter who was part of that process. I spent time with um, board members on the Microsoft board in this process to decide whether I was the right person, whether I had the right experience, all those sorts of things to join the board. And it's been a terrific experience. That's great. Uh, you know, for those of us that don't know what a board of directors meeting is like, can you tell us what happens inside the Microsoft <laughs> meeting? Yeah, yeah. So I would say a couple things about the role of a board member. Um, and I think it's one of the things that makes um, Microsoft a terrific place. Not only is it important what happens inside the board meeting, but it also is very important what the interactions are outside of the board meeting. So it's a very open environment. Um, we have a lot of interaction with individuals inside the company, either because we're asked, can you help this team because you have some experience and come spend time with them? Um, and vice versa, when we have an idea of something that we think might be important, it's a very open environment where we can come and share our knowledge, expertise with individual members or groups of people inside the company. So I think that's as important as what happens in the board meeting itself. But what happens in the board meeting is a couple of things. One is we have governance things that we need to attend to, whether it's compensation, audit, regulatory, financial matters that are part of our committee structure. And so there are committee meetings where there's a subset of us that interacts with individuals in the Microsoft team. Um, and so that's part of the process. And then we have meet the meeting time is a full board meeting where we talk about the most important things in the company, whether it's strategy, people, talent development, priorities. And it's a very open dialogue. The thing that's great about the Microsoft board is it's light on PowerPoint presentation, and it's heavy on 
bringing issues forward or things that the team is thinking about and seeking our advice, seeking our input. And because of how this board works, there's a lot of play off between different board members. It helps make it a much richer dialogue and a set of conversations. And at the end of the board meeting, there's clarity about, okay, these are decisions we made. These are things we'd like some more follow-up on in, in a next board meeting. And oh, by the way, you know, I'd like you and you to help this team do some work um, outside of the board context and then come back at the next board meeting. So it's a very dynamic yeah. process. Yeah, Sandy, your experience in healthcare, it runs very deep. And as we turn to tech, I guess, what surprised you most about joining Microsoft's board, perhaps the view of the company? So I think one of the things that surprised me the most, and I, I would tell you in a very positive way, and it's been a great part of my experience at Microsoft, is that you know, when Satya was asked to become CEO and John Thompson took over the chairmanship, clearly the, it was an inflection point at the company. I joined the board shortly thereafter. And how do you reinvigorate this company that has a great history in technology? How do we make it most relevant for the next generation of what's happening in technology? And how do you get the culture to be a vibrant, exciting culture and the place where everybody who works in technology wants to be? And so one of the things that's been a terrific positive surprise for me is how the company and how the leadership has been able to really make that happen by really focusing on a learning culture, focusing on there are no stupid ideas, how do we get this culture to be much more collaborative and open. And the thing that's been a great fun surprise for me is watching what comes out of these labs and the extent to which this company has unbelievable technology depth that it's really not an issue of are they the best, it's really what choices are they going to make to bring to the market first. So Sandy, you've been at the forefront of Johnson & Johnson's efforts to transform healthcare through technology. You know, what are some of the most compelling developments you've seen in recent years? You know, what excites you about that future? So as you know, I've been in healthcare for a really long time and I lived through the era of the dot-com when the tech industry thought, we can go figure this out ourselves, we're going to disrupt healthcare. And it didn't work, and it didn't work for a couple of reasons. One is that healthcare is more complicated than many other industries. There's the data to be able to really have a big impact is locked in all sorts of old systems that exist all over the place, whether it's a doctor's office or in multiple different hospital settings. And so that is a huge barrier to getting a seamless view of the person who's a patient or somebody who's just trying to stay well. And there are a couple of things that have made a significant difference in our ability to use technology to transform healthcare. So um, there, obviously the advent of the mobile phone and mobile technology where you now have access and interaction with people that's completely different than it used to be makes it a lot easier to engage with people as consumers or patients or doctors anywhere in the world. You also, with the advent of cloud and technologies, then it can pull data out of these old systems, put it in a data lake, whether it's structured or unstructured, and do the analytics around it. It's a massive transformation in what we are now able to do when it comes to ingesting data, analyzing it, and making it relevant back to the doctor or back to the consumer. But you also need a couple of other things. Obviously, the breakthroughs we've had in biology, which have been enabled by technology, quite honestly, have made a big difference. But our knowledge of behavior science and how you engage people, you know, everybody knows they should lose five pounds. Everybody knows they're supposed to sleep. Everybody knows they're supposed to take their medication. Why don't they? And we've done a lot of work on the behavior science side, and we know how to interact in a very non-intrusive way. And so we're really at the forefront of being able to do very different things now and using technology to help transform healthcare. So as we like to say at J&J, &J, we want to be in the well care business, not the sick care business, and we want to positively impact billions of lives every single day around the world. And Sandy, you've been vocal about the fact that the gender gap for women in the workplace, it still looms very large. Uh, and you've been successful at improving the number of women in leadership roles at companies you've been involved with, like Johnson & Johnson. I'm wondering, what is the key to sustaining that momentum moving forward? So to me, it's about diversity of thought, experience. It's not just about women, although that's really, really important. I've always believed that you need to reflect 
the customers that you serve and the world in which you live in. And you don't, I mean, it's a smart business thing to do. There's been a million studies done that say that if you have diversity of thought, experience, trying to solve a problem, you're going to do a much better job solving that problem by having that kind of diversity in the room. And so I've always been a huge advocate of making sure that that happens. But you have to remember, you know, business people are trained to um, deliver results based on metrics. So just saying it doesn't make it happen. You actually have to hold people accountable and you have to do all the right things to make it happen. So you've got to put teeth behind it, but you also have to do all those things around sponsorship, mentorship. We do a lot of work and a lot of people at J&J &J are very enthusiastic about helping women early in their lives and it's something Microsoft does as well. How do we get women to want to do the quote unquote hard sciences and keep them in those disciplines over time? So there's a lot that you do at the early stages of people's careers, but it's, it's really not that hard. It's no harder than am I going to make my top and bottom line number. You just have to make it a priority and make it work. And the thing that's so much fun for me to see is these women who take on these great leadership roles, what they're able to do and the engagement level of their teams is through the roof. And it's just really exciting to see. Well, maybe to close then, Sandy, uh, when you're not in the boardroom, how do you like to spend your time? So I spend my time lots of different ways. I'm obviously, as you can tell, an intellectually curious person. So I love to read. I love to be engaged in the arts um, because I think it's important to always have other stimulus and things to think about. Um, I'm also one of these people who believes that you need to sort of take care of yourself. So I'm a big proponent of working out in some way, shape, or form every single day because it's good for your energy level, your resilience to be able to do what you do every day. And I'm also very fortunate that I have two adult sons um, who are terrific, who keep me real every day and also teach me every day what the next generation cares about. Sandy, thank you so much. It's been a real privilege for us. Thanks for joining us. Sandy Peterson, Microsoft Board of Directors. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. It's been great fun.